Welcome back to this mini series on Shohin Bonsai. In our last uh, video, we did a program, we did a video on working with a Gruia bonsai, a Gruia tree that originates in South Africa. Today we're going to be working on this Ketoniaster, which is a long gangly tree, and in a few minutes it'll be a nice compact little Shohin or miniature bonsai. Before we get started today, I'd just like to tell you that we're up to 750,000 um, subscribers on my Instagram account, which is like three quarters of a million, and 800,000 on TikTok, and over 500,000 on Bonsai Society. Now, I never expected we would get numbers like that. I'm just flabbergasted, blown out of the water. We've really created a Bonsai army. You're all part of the soldiers, and we're going to take over this world with bonsai. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's get started here. This is a little Ketoniaster. Uh, Ketoniaster is in the rose family. They have small white star-shaped flowers, and in the fall they have little red berries. A great tree to do mini bonsai with because the leaves and the flowers and the fruit are so small. So we're going to take it out of its pot, remove a little bit of the soil here around the base so we can get a better look at what we're working with. And we have to choose the front of the tree. So again, we want the front to be coming towards, towards you. Um, so here I think is the best front right here. This right here and we're going to start by removing the branch here that's coming directly toward the front so I will just mark the front again right here here we go we've got this on the front this big scar will cover over it'll heal within a year you won't see it any longer now first branch our first branch in this case, well, sorry, the first branch is actually on the right hand side. So, now the branches have to be quite compact. So this is our first branch here. Our second branch is on this side right here. So we want it shorter and not as low as the first one. So I'm actually leaving the upper part, removing the lower one. So here's our second branch. Now we do have a branch right here that is a, our back branch, and it's not very strong yet, so we're not going to cut it back too much. Now, when we get up here, we do have another branch we're going to wire down as the back branch. We have one here that we'll use as the front branch. And when we get up here, this is, this is a very long, long, long branch that we don't need at all. So we're going to cut all of this right off here and cut about right here to make our top. So here we have our little Shohin bonsai now that we can see it. Okay, I'm just going to remove some excess um, foliage here now. And we'll wire down one or two little branches, and then we'll be ready to get this potted up. So, here we go with this, this 
little branch here. This one here is sticking out, so we want to bring that down. Okay. Now, this branch here, we will wire this one into place. And now we will wire the back branch and another side branch into place. You know, I used to have a friend, well, I still have the friend, um, who grows sh Shohin. And he would get me so angry because in spring, he would start repotting his, his Shohin trees, his miniature bonsai, and within a day or two, he would be telling me, oh, my repotting is all over for the year. And I'd go, what do you mean? And he'd say, yeah, yeah. I repotted uh, sometimes 30 or 40 within a couple of days. So um, it does go faster with uh, Shohin bonsai. Uh, the trees are smaller, they can be pruned at a faster pace so it's it's fun to have shohin bonsai they don't they take up less space and especially as you start getting older in life uh, it's a distinct bonus because they're not so heavy to carry around it's a very popular size right now in Japan there we go okay so it's done okay now no the medium sized ones are called chew bonsai and they generally go up to about 30 35 centimeters kifu are midway between shohin and chew okay so now because this is a smaller size of uh of shohin we don't want such a we don't want such a large pot uh, we want the pot to be no more than about two-thirds the height of the tree so I've taken out two pots. This time I've gotten the pots ready in advance. I've put the, um, the screening in and the anchoring wire in already because, um, well, if you want to see how I did it, just go to the first in this series of Shohin Bonsai, okay? Go to the previous video. So here we go. Uh, this one is a little bit deep. But again, deep is not bad for fruiting bonsai because it gives them more soil, more vigor. But I actually like this one much more. It's about, uh, it's not overwhelming the tree. So we're gonna put it into this, this, the pot that's in front of me, all right? And again, I start by removing the excess uh, substrate or soil um, at the top we want to reveal reveal the nabari or the root base all these beautiful roots that are coming from the base of the trunk that's a real plus to have beautiful roots there's one that's a bit too high that we'll remove there and one here okay so now we've removed all of these I can see all the roots. Now we'll turn it over, remove the excess soil here on the base. As you can see, I'm trying to either use my fingers or um, a wooden chopstick because they don't rip the roots so much. If you're using metal tools, it's often very traumatizing for the roots. Um, we can damage them. I'll, to a large extent, so I just want to avoid that if possible. So now I am removing the excess roots right under the trunk.
always leaving sufficient feeder roots around the edges that will keep the tree alive. Very important. Okay, so now our tree is almost ready. Now I have to open up the edges here. These shohin are fun because they're so small that you can actually put four or five in the palm of your hand. Um, and uh, they don't take up too much space on the balcony. For, so for people that live in condos or apartment buildings and have a nice sunny balcony, you can grow a lot of, of shohin bonsai um, from your balcony. Yeah. So here we've got the roots are pretty compact. I just need to shorten them a little bit in the back. Okay, so I do want to bring this branch down a bit more and uh, maybe I'll just use a slightly thicker wire. <clears throat> I have to anchor it to something, so I will anchor it to the next branch on the other side. Now I will be able to bring this branch down, um, lower the center of gravity or the focal point of this tree here. Ah, there we go. That's better. Okay. It was bothering me. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Can we get it into this pot? Yeah, no problem here. So we do want it off center a bit to balance this branch. So I do have to remove just a bit more soil on this, uh, a bit of the root ball. On We're ready to pot up this little cotoneaster. Uh, we've chosen a very small pot. I'm going to put a very, very thin layer of medium size onto the bottom of the pot. Also a little bit of bone meal so that it'll flower more. And There's a little bit of, os of osmocote and a little bit of um, mycorrhizin there. Okay, so now we're going to tie it in. Because the tree and the pot are so small, I don't think I need two anchoring wires. Just one should be enough. And I want to off-center it. So here we are, off-centered. And I'm going to try to hide the wire a bit. We don't want to see it sticking out. So I'll just try to pass it under some very large roots here. There we go. And tie the tree in. So we'll get our little pliers. Make sure the tree is in the right position, leaning towards us also. So I have it leaning a little bit more. Now comes the, the tying in of the tree. That's so the tree will never be knocked out of its pot. It's very important to tie a tree in, to anchor it into the pot. That way, even if the tree if it gets turned upside down, it won't fall out. It, it has to be good and solid in there. Okay, now we will add some, some very, some finer bonsai mix, and we'll work that in.
Now these shohin should stay small for quite a long time. Um, growing bonsai in small pots is a lot like uh, <clears throat> raising goldfish. If you buy a goldfish and put it in a very small uh, tank, uh, the goldfish actually doesn't get much bigger. But if you buy a very tiny goldfish and put it in a 100 gallon aquarium, uh, that goldfish can become as big as one of those torpedo shaped carp. So once we transfer a bonsai into a very small pot, it actually does help in slowing down its growth. And this tree should stay um, compact for quite a while. I, I can actually keep it in a pot this size for maybe <clears throat> 10 years. Mind you, when they're this small, you have to repot them every year. So I'm going to have to take this out of its pot every year and comb out the roots a bit and then put it in and change the soil. Um, but that's fine. That uh, just takes a few minutes. So here we are, folks. This is the finished results. Okay. <clears throat> We're just going to bring this down a little bit more, bring this over here, do the final setting of the branches. This one comes like this, and there we are. So, nice little, nice little finished bonsai here. Ketoniaster microphylla, um, a dwarf ketoniaster, they call it um, rock spray ketoniaster, is the common name. Great subject for miniature sized bonsai. So before I say goodbye to you, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and also, if you want to see the first part on Gruya Bonsai, uh, just go back one, you'll see it there. And the next mini-series will be on a ficus Shohin Bonsai.